One of the most important jobs in working bees in the springtime is, is managing populations of bees. You have various strengths of hives in the springtime. Early spring, you could have some very strong hives and some very weak hives and a lot of hives in between. And managing those populations is what's called equalization, where you try to bring some of that strength from the strong hives and giving it to the weaker hives to equalize those populations and equalize that strength to, to equalize the growth of those hives. And your, your purpose of that is trying to keep the very strong hives from growing to swarm strength too early, but also boosting those hives that are very weak because hive growth is at an exponential rate, meaning the very strong hives grow exponentially faster than a very small hive because a, a hive can only a queen will only lay where in the area the big this 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 small enough for the cluster of bees to cover those if those if she gets outside of that cluster the bees can't cover that brood and, and they won't leave so she'll only lay in a big enough area for that that brood to cover it so you can uh, imagine taking a very small cluster of bees and only land in that area, the time that it takes for that cluster of bee, that, that cluster of brood to be capped and then emerge and then account for bee die-off, how long it could take for a, a hive to grow out to be large enough to, to make a honey crop if they ever do. One idea to keep in mind is, is as far as swarming, you have to keep that population down to a level that's not strong enough to swarm until after the honey flow starts. You, you, you can't let your bees peak before the honey flow starts because they will always swarm. But once the honey flow starts, that, that swarming tendency is reduced a lot because bees start to focus more on, on bringing in nectar. So, so you want your, your population of your bees to peak after after the honey flow has started. The, it won't, it, the honey flow won't stop swarms, but it, it will drastically reduce it. Um, other people do manage their populations by what's, what's called equalizing, which, which is commonly known as, as going through your beehives and leaving each frame with the exact number of brood frames. And that's, that's what is referred to typically when you hear of equalizing hives. I like to do it a little bit different. It's easier and quicker and still works good, still works great. Um, I have some different ways of doing it. One way that I do is, is some of the strong hives, I will take brood frames from those and, and give to the very weak hives. I just move the frames. Of course, finding the queen, making sure the queen's not on those frames. And I'll pull from a eight frame hive, two or three frames and give to a two or three frame hive to boost those that, that colony up and, and get that population a little closer together. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind with that is if you if you've got a very small hive, you don't want to add too many frames of bees in there to that hive. Say even if, if you had a, a, a hive that had one frame of bees and, and you go in there and, and pull three or four or five frames of brood from another hive and, and add into that box, a lot of the time that, that new abundance of bees coming from that same hive into that new hive with that queen, a lot of times immediately they'll kill that queen. Um, so don't, don't overpopulate it at one time. But one, one way you can help with that is by smoking. If you, when you move those, those frames over, bees, a lot of people don't realize that you can do that. They think that, that bees will fight, fight and, and kill each other out, but that's, that's just not true. Sometimes, maybe just a little bit, you'll see it, but not, not very often. It's definitely not a problem, but one thing that you can do to help is by smoking the, the hive heavily when you move those frames over. Just, just smoke the bees up real good. That helps. Spray them with some sugar water or 
even some water mixed with honey be healthy. That works good too. If, if, if you're not feeding and there's no flow going on, any kind of flow started, be very careful with honey be healthy because getting that smell around the hive will cause robbing it, especially on a, a weak hive like you're dealing with. It, it can really cause a robbing problem. So I, I recommend not using honey be healthy for that. Another way that we do equalization is is just taking where that that weak hive is, pulling it off of the bottom board, taking a strong hive and moving it in, into place where the weak hive was, moving the weak hive into place where the strong hive was, just just flip flopping locations. And you do that during during the day when when bees are flying real good, not on a not on a, a day when they're not flying good, a cloudy day, a rainy day. Do it on a a good foraging day when they're getting a day that they're out getting pollen really good and you see a lot of bees flying in and out of the hive, do it in a prime part of the day when they are foraging. Swap those locations and all those foragers that's out will move into that new spot. And it's not that big a deal if you're not able to find the best time because when those foragers fly out, most of those are going to relocate when they come back to the old location, even after you've moved the hive. But it, 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 it would be ideal if you done it during a, a, a good part of the day when they're foraging. Um, another way that we do it, and, and this is this is what we do most often, is taking a weak hive and either a, we take a strong hive that's either, depending on what part of the spring, a single deep or a, a double deep brood hive. We just pull the top off of that, that strong hive, put an excluder on top, grab the wheat colony, which will be in one box, put it right on top of the excluder. Leave the queen in the box, it'll, it'll be a, a double queen hive. And those, those, that strength of bees in that, in that bottom hive will move up through the excluder into that top box and, and give, give that queen a bigger cluster up top and a bigger place to lay and that, 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 that hive will start to grow much, much faster. Um, one thing that to, to keep in mind later in the year when you have those those stronger hives is is just just adding a box on top is is not considered adding room and, and stopping swarm and that's not not going to stop that that urge to swarm early in the spring that that box is still going to to fill with brood in the bottom and once it does and they start to store up honey and it, it starts to condense in there, those bees are still gonna swarm. The only way that you can stop swarming is to give the queen more room and more room is more place to lay. So you must remove some brood from that colony and add comb back into the nest. The best way to do that is with drawn comb. If you do not have any access to drawn comb, one thing you can do is pull some frames out, pull some make a split with it or add it into a weak hive and checkerboard some foundation in place. When you checkerboard, keep the, the, the foundation frames, you're checkerboarding with, with clean foundation. Don't, don't put doubles inside that, that box. Use one frame at a time and checkerboard that between two of the existing drawn combs. Use a foundation two drawn combs, a foundation, two drawn combs, and try not to split the brood nest into, if you do use at least two to three uh, found, uh, frames of, of brood in between each, each checkerboarded foundation. That'll leave those, those clusters together more and, and keep that, that brood warmer. Your hives that are starting to build up more stores, whether it be from feeding or early parts of the honey flow, you'll have uh, s some hives that'll, that'll start to, to fill in a lot more with, with frames of honey that you'll need to remove to make more room or, or either move it around. And one good way to do that is giving it to some weaker hives. But also one thing that we do is when we have an abundance of it, we'll, we will take a lot of those extra frames out but and this is this is prior to the honey flow when when 
bees are needing something to, to, to feed on. We'll set them out away from the hives. Just, just set them out in the open and let the bees rob them out. And that all, that, you pulling those frames from the, the stronger hives, once the, when the bees forage on those and remove the honey from those, they, it disperses the honey throughout, throughout the other hives and gives, gives some more, moves it, moves it more into those weaker hives. And that also gives you some drawn comb to put back into these brood nests that you're pulling frames from. One, one thing you can do other than these methods, um, if you don't, don't want to split, if you're at the number of hives that you're able to handle and, and just can't make splits when you start getting an abundance of, of brood frames, don't have weaker hives to put them in. One thing that you can do is called the Damare method, which is, is moving, moving brood up on the same hive and separating it by, by honey supers above an excluder and leaving that queen in the very bottom and, and giving her plenty of room. There's a, I have another video on that method if you'd like to go back and watch that. <laughs> Sometimes, even through all the manipulations that you do, you, sometimes you're still going to find queen cells here and there. Uh, may find a hive that's, that's getting ready to swarm. Yeah, you can take those, those frames out. Those, those cells that you find from a, a hive that's getting ready to swarm makes the best queens that you could possibly find. So if, if, if you are able to make splits, able to, to manage some more hives, those, those frames are, are the best thing to make splits with. Pull those out and make splits using them. Um, Mash them all down other than one or two queen cells and, and move it into a, a nuke box or a 10 frame box depending on how many frames you want to pull out and use those for splits. Otherwise, just mash down the queen cells and manipulate it like we had just talked of, uh, just giving the queen more room to lay and that should stop your, your swarm. I'm Brad Kelly with Chilton Bee Company and I thank you for watching.